welcome back to my channel. This is the first time I've spoken to you since all the Burns Night celebrations and things. That was on Monday and today it's Wednesday now. We're the 27th of January so um what I, you may notice what I've done is I've left one clip in my hair because I've had quite a number of people ask me about how I curl my hair with the clips but I don't actually curl my hair with the clips I just use a curling iron basically I wrap my hair around it and when I take the iron out I try and catch the curl hold it and then I just put one of these clips in and one of the reasons that I do it is because I'm you know I'm a busy mom you know I do a lot in the house and things so I find it easier just to do that in the morning clip my hair out the way it keeps my hair out even though my hair doesn't bother me it it kind of like it keeps it nice so then if like all of a sudden I have to go out I can kind of just let my hair down and then off I go. So I tend to sometimes take my hair out a little bit earlier um, when I'm filming because sometimes I don't always want to sit in my videos and have clips in my hair for every video. But what's quite nice about doing it, um, sorry, I did say it was going to be about sewing, but I just thought I'd mention this because I've had quite a number of people ask me. Um, it basically it um it helps it cools then the curl cools down while it's clipped up and i think it holds it quite nicely uh, i used to hairspray it some of the clips look a bit a bit horrible some of the older ones and that's from hairspray but i don't hairspray it anymore is when i put this heat protection spray in and i let it out it kind of gives it a bit of hold and i don't need the hairspray and i think to myself oh do i really want to be breathing in all that hairspray all the time do you know what i'm saying it's not can't be good for you can it anyway back to uh crafts and sewing so i'm going to let you know kind of what's been going on in here and what i've been up to um I've had to move my embroidery machine um, out of here and put it in the conservatory uh, where the printer used to be because my printer's wireless. Um, because we moved the conservatory round over Christmas, um, the uh, wireless, the router just wasn't reaching the printer and I was just having trouble. I just couldn't print anything, you know, very often. So what I've um, done is I've put the embroidery machine in the conservatory in the place of the printer because um, obviously I don't need Wi-Fi for that. And now the printer's there. So it has moved around a bit. I did have my Singer sewing machine on that table. Originally it was the the embroidery machine. Then I put my Singer sewing machine on there. Then it was the embroidery again. And now it's the printer. So the Singer sewing machine I have basically on display on my dresser in the kitchen. But if I want to use it, I can just get it out. And the embroidery machine's in there as well now. And the cover stitch machine's in there. So... The uh, the uh, sewing room is kind of expanding out, isn't it, really? And I often keep knitting down the side of my bed, um, not to my husband's enjoyment, of course. He doesn't, he's not all that keen on it. Anyway, another thing I've been doing, I might, inc I might stop now and show you a video. Time to trace. I've traced out all my pieces now for the South Bank sweater to make the sweater dress, but I've decided I'm going to also trace the um the mini version out while I've got it out. But I've run out of my regular uh, tracing paper. So if you've been watching my um channel for a while, you remember I bought this massive, massive roll of tracing paper from More Plan. So I've just had to open it. It's really heavy. It was really difficult to open, but I've managed to do it. And I've just laid it on my cutting table and I've put my pattern, one pattern piece underneath and I can see through it really easily. So I think it's going to be really nice to use. So I'll give you a bit of an update on it and how I'm getting on. Right, I'm back. I can't actually remember what I said on that video. Uh, it was all about my um, tracing paper. So that's what you can see here. I've been using this tracing paper. I can't remember where I got it from. This dots and spots stuff. And I had loads of it. 
but it was a really it was a nightmare because it was massive and it was folded up really weird so it was a bit of a nightmare every time I got out to use it but as I was starting to run out of it I was enjoying it a little bit more because it was a bit more manageable but I actually um I was tracing out my Nina Lee South Bank right and um the plan was i'm going to make the dress version because there's three versions of this version one version two and version three one is a dress version two is like a medium kind of length top and then the version three is a cropped one and i can see myself in that version and that that version but i thought you know what i wouldn't rule out the middle one i think if i was going to uh, get some very lightweight jersey that i could tuck into my jeans I think I would wear that long one. So what I decided to do, while I was in the tracing kind of mood, I've de I decided to trace all the bits out, but it meant I ran out of this spot stuff. So I had to get this one out, which is quite nice now, because I've had to put it on here. And um, it, oh gosh, I don't know if you remember when I bought this, it was from uh, More Plan. And oh my goodness, I remember I ignored the door because I didn't know who the man was. He didn't look like a delivery man and then it bit me in the bottom because I got one of those ring things so you can see people and then when I went out there this was there and I had trouble getting it in and uh, then I tried to show you on camera and I was worried about it showing my address so I turned myself into like a cartoon so you couldn't see it then the next drama it's been a, an absolute nightmare trying to keep this in the house and i wasn't keeping it in here at one point my husband said what the hell is this you've got to do something with this so uh i did move it in here eventually but trying to open it i actually haven't still haven't got all the packaging off the still packaging stuff i think the center has got damaged and so it means the packaging is stuck. And you know, when you take the packaging off, it just wouldn't come off in one piece. It was just going right out to King round and round. Oh, it was it was a nightmare. But now it's out and on here, it's going to be great. It still is a bit of a cumbersome thing to use when I want to drag it out because I've got to try and bring it across and then roll it out it, you know you've got to have a bit of strength about you and things to be able to do it but I don't think I'll ever have to iron my, um, my tracing paper pieces now because it's always going to be flat on here and I've really discovered something last night um, this is one of the pieces I've cut off it's actually got a shiny side to it so this will mean you'll be able to iron it onto your fabric and it will temporarily stick the reason I know I haven't tried it yet but the reason I know this let me have a look if I can get it I've got freezer paper here now this is the second freezer paper I've ever used and uh, I find I use this for smaller kind of crap and um yeah and it's it's basically it feels like that so i don't think i'd be buying this expensive actually i say expensive when i first bought this sewing wasn't trendy basically so baking got trendy because of the um bake off I was really into baking before Bake Off. I used to really struggle to get things I wanted. Bake Off came around and then it was wonderful, but I'd kind of like gone off baking a bit at the time. And then sewing, when I, you know, I was passionate about sewing, I've had to source so many things in from America. I'm not saying the UK didn't have things, but when the internet wasn't very good, you, you know, you'd only know what you know, word of mouth. And, uh, and then as the internet has started to come around, it was the Americans that I was noticing and I was ordering things from America. But obviously with the sewing bee now in the UK, sewing got trendy, you know, dressmaking has got trendy, patchwork and quilting. So it's wonderful for me. So when I first bought this, I hardly paid a thing for it. But then sewing got trendy and sewers got into it. Oh, it got expensive, didn't it? so but i won't be buying that again because i think this this thing is that it seems the same i've got to try it but um i think it'll keep me going for life basically so uh so yeah so basically uh, things that i like to do on my patterns i can't say i've done this on all of them i like to say what the seam allowance is um I sometimes like to put what the hem allowance is. I did check what the hem was. Did I write a note of it? I think the hem 
I, I've wrote a note on one of my pattern pieces. I think the hem on the one that doesn't have a band, I think is two centimetres. Don't quote me on it. Yes, I have. On the that, that, that version, the pattern piece, I've put what the hem is. Because sometimes it, you need to know what the hem is. So you can work out where this is going to finish and if you want it. So I haven't wrote what the hem is on here. But I think I will actually. I'll do that now. Two centimetre hem. Right. Uh, and I'll put that on, that's on version two and three because you don't need a hem on version one um i like to put what stretch you need for your fabric um i like to put the seam allowance on there because they vary a lot you know between different designers and i actually another thing i've i've just decided to start doing i always end up looking this up what height the pattern designer bases their patterns to now nina lee i've looked it up she bases her patterns on five uh five foot five i'm five foot four so i've actually i've took an inch off my dress pattern piece um i haven't took anything off the um the top because in all honesty do you know if i've ever just kept a pattern piece as it is i normally look and the waistline seems to look okay so what i think it is i know five foot four isn't very tall um uh, but my body seems to be standard i think maybe i've got short legs um you know so and another thing i've noticed is i've never shortened arms i've always left them the same but if anything some of them I've thought I could do with adding an inch. So basically, I've come to the conclusion my body shape is orangutan. That's my conclusion, right? <laughs> I've got long arms and short legs and a regular body. So that's my body shape, right? <laughs> so, you know, I thought that was quite funny, actually. But uh, anyway, so well, I'm going off, right? So what what did I want to say? So that's what's going on with the South Bank. Um, I've got fabric ready to make one of them. It's probably going to be the dress. The fabric has been pre-washed and tumbled dried, even though you should probably shouldn't tumble dry it. But the, the pattern, it's that cosy colours and it's got little bits on it. And I thought, well, if it goes a bit bitty, it's not really going to matter to much is it because it's bitty anyway um so yes i'm pretty much good to go so i could have just got straight on last night and started thinking about laying my pattern pieces out but i didn't i started doing something else oh actually before i start going on about what else i did let me put this on the floor uh, before i carry on with that anyway um is i'll tell you what i'm wearing uh now it's really exciting because i love it when people feel inspired by you and karen from so little time um started to crochet she was inspired by my crochet crochet and I tried to give her a few pointers on, uh, on what to you know where to go and kind of thing she'd had some experience she'd had a little class before where she'd learned a few basic things and I just said you know how I kind of picked it up and uh, and she's been she's made a few things now she's made a couple of teddies she's made some granny squares and she's made a bunny and uh, and actually it's from a magazine I used to subscribe to I wonder if I've got any of those magazines here no I haven't got them I'm not saying I haven't got them anymore I have got them, but I haven't got them this size. It's my knitting um, book, uh, books and magazines I've got here. So, so she's done that. Now, because Becky notes from the sewing room, uh, I've watched her video this morning and she said she wants to learn crochet and she signed up to a class, an up and coming class, um, because she feels inspired by Karen. So it's lovely, isn't it? So uh, in a sort of like in tribute to them, I've put on a crochet cardigan today. I crocheted this. Well, I completed it um, last year. Uh, but I started it the year before, so uh, it was one of those, it was a bit of a slow burner. I was going to a craft group, it's not a knitting or crochet group or anything, it's just like a general, you just do whatever you want kind of thing. And we go for friendship really, and uh, and sometimes there's things going on, but uh, I often take my own project, because sometimes I don't really want to start something else, or I'm not, I don't really want to do what everybody else is doing kind of thing. So uh, I start 
started this crochet cardigan and I literally was only doing it when I was there so sometimes I'd pick it up and sometimes I wouldn't and it was just seemed to be going on forever and then one day last year I think it might have been the start of last year and I think what it is it was a, meant to be a valentine project from the year before I didn't find the pattern till after valentine's that that year and i thought oh it'd be really nice to get this done for valentine's because you might be able to see it's got a it's a bubble bubble hearts on it and actually the designer what inspired me to wear this today as well the designer of this pattern like i didn't know what the right hashtags were to use when i posted this on instagram but i've noticed that she'd used a hashtag so i've gone back to my old posts and I've uh, one that's one that was in the making, one when I just finished it was hanging, and and one when I was wearing it in a post. And uh, I've changed, I've put the hashtag on there now. So if people look up the hashtag the designers use, my posts are in there now because they wasn't included. And it was really nice seeing other people's. I'd saw a lady had done a grey one, but she'd done her bubbles in different colours. So I don't know if she's done them after or what, how she's gone along. I don't I don't know. You could swap over your colour when you got to the bubbles if you wanted to and then go back to your regular colour or you could probably crochet bubbles after if you wanted to I suppose couldn't you but I absolutely love this cardigan um like looking at me and look I'm looking at myself now the colour looks okay I, what it is I, when I see photographs of myself I just think I can't wear mustard very well uh I really just don't think it's me but uh, looking at myself on here now it does look okay so uh, yeah it's um the designer of this cardigan it's crochet i don't know if i mentioned that yeah, i've mentioned it's crochet uh, uh iron lamb is the designer and i found it in the molly makes magazine i love that magazine because it's kind of you know very trendy and uh and, and different kind of crafts and things it's really nice so uh yeah I'll, I'll stand up and show you you might have seen it before in my video i think i've wore, wore it in a video before um so yeah it's quite a slouchy i um i basically Basically, when I measured myself at the time, I think I sized up. I, I went a size up. I think it was the next one up from the smallest because I didn't want it really small. I wanted it quite big, really. I think that's quite a nice size on me. But do you know what? I probably would not wear it even bigger and slouchier than that. But it, it, I think it has got like a very slouchy kind of style. But I was so happy to get this done. And when I got it done, I thought, oh, I want to make another one. I thought, no, no, I don't want to, you know, I want to do something else kind of thing. So I've ended up doing other things. I've done a really nice animal print knitted hats and things and actually I've got a crochet shawl thing uh, I've never photographed ever so maybe I'll put that in and I've, I've got some other crochet things that I don't think I've ever I've ever wore on video I might not have even ever photographed them you know so yeah maybe I'll put a few more of the things on so yes yeah, so a good luck to my um online friends uh you know go go getting off in your crochet adventure i'm really happy for you and i will warn you that when i got into because i've knitted longer than i can remember my mom taught me to knit i don't remember my mom teaching me because i was so small i just always remember i've always been able to knit i remember at times sometimes when i wanted to do purl i'd have to sometimes go back to my mom and say i can't remember how to purl and my mom would show me how to purl again but uh, eventually it just started to stick my husband knitting as a child was very basic it was casting on knitting purling casting off uh, I used to do a lot with knitting dollies and things it wasn't until I got into adulthood um, that I really got started to improve my knitting um, actually I think what ha how it kind of happened how I start I did a bit of knitting in my teens and things and then when um, when I, I kind of stopped doing it like the crafts got re was really not fashionable you know at one point all the haberdasheries were closing down trying to get anything was a bit of a nightmare for me and that's when I kind of stopped doing a lot of crafts 
um, I couldn't even, I couldn't get any embroidery, I used to do a lot of cross stitch, I couldn't get embroidery thread from my, my haberdashery basically closed down and it was just awful so crafting kind of was going out of my life at one point um, as I got into my later teens but I had three jobs, I had a gym membership, going out clubbing, you know dating and things, I didn't have a, a whole lot of time for crafts anyway and my mum used to help me with sort of like do like clubbing things, we used to jazz up like clubbing clothes and make furry boots and furry bras and things so crafting wasn't totally out of my life you know there was a little bit here and there but um it was more obviously when I got my my mum bought me the sewing machine when my first son um was born it was the Christmas he was born in 2003 and my mum bought me my, a proper adult machine because I only had a child's machine before that didn't even have electric you know so <laughs> it's quite basic wasn't it so uh where was I going with this? I was going somewhere. It was leading somewhere. And then I'll go off about how I got into it and things. Sorry. Maybe I'll remember. Anyway, um, so that's crochet that I wasn't even planning really on talking about much but I did then thought oh I will because it kind of felt right with the designer posting a new another colorway of this last night and uh and then you know my friend seeing that video this morning it kind of made me think about oh yeah what I'm wearing I'm wearing a shop bought top right now I really do like this I don't know where it's from it's old River Island it's River Island right it's Jersey um it's really bubbly now because I've wore it that often, right? But I, I might clone it, you know. I really like it that much. It's it's really like it's slouchy, but it doesn't. It skims. Do you know what I'm saying? It doesn't make. It's not like oh, it makes me look like a bag of washing kind of thing. And it's, but it's really fitted on the arms. I really like the neck. So I think if I can get any. I'm wondering how stretch. I will test the stretch on it at some point. But if I can get, I'm going to test the stretch on this. If I can find a lightweight jersey uh, with the right amount of stretch, I'm going to clone this definitely. And maybe I find it so wearable as well. It isn't what it's, it's an off-white colour, um, which is quite nice, isn't it? Not brilliant white. It's so wearable, isn't it? Because um, you know, the colour of it. And what I'm wearing on my bottom half is you've I don't know if you've ever seen me um wearing these on camera, but they're my Jaily leggings. It, they're green, right, excuse my socks and slippers, it's really nice, it's this, what was it called now, that uh, mo tensile kind of jersey, stretchy, I, I did write what it was exactly when I made these, my, if you look back on my Instagram posts, um, you might see a bit more information, I got it from Guthrie and Garney, and uh, and look, look at the waistband, there are two kind of waistbands on this, it's got a thick waistband, it's, oh, I'm not going to show you my crotch, but it's got a crotch piece, and the legs are just one whole piece, each leg, so you don't have a side seam down the side and um I have all these at the gym actually um and uh actually I got I got photographed unexpected well like you know I got told well, can we take your photograph at the gym when I was cycling in these because I got involved in um, a marathon thing for charity uh, that you all do a bit so far and they write down how long you've done and it all goes towards you know making up this marathon kind of thing so uh yeah so but do you know what um they because uh, of the color you know you've really got to watch what you're wearing what you're matching up with but uh i think i'm just gonna wear them in the house you know as some house leggings and again if i get the right fabric i am definitely making these again i've got the pattern here sorry i would have had to cut a bit of that out because it, it took me a while i normally have a trolley here don't i do you know that trolley I'm looking at my bag it's all hanging weird this is my a free motion bag oh gosh i made ages ago um i love it it was poppy to fry design i love poppy to fry to, to fry 
Uh, her name, she calls herself Poppy to Fry. I've got a Poppy to Fray for that long, I'm getting it wrong. This is the pattern I use for the leggings, the Jaylee um, Clara leggings, basically. And uh, she does the full length, which that's what I made, a cropped length and the short length. But do you know what? If I need any shorts for the gym, I definitely make those because obviously I found the fit I like. They love the really actually looking at these the shorts they do, they haven't got um the thick waistband on because you've got two different kind of waistbands but I think if you wanted to put that thick waistband on the shorts I think you could do that so I have got another leggings pattern what it is I was thinking oh I'm going to make some sportswear because I bought that blue sporting fabric didn't I then I said oh should I make a figure skating dress in it but I've decided I'm not going to do that I'm going to do something sporting but this morning I've had a look um through my sportswear and I've actually separated all my ice skating wear like practice wear from gym kind of wear and actually I've got quite a few sports clothes and um do you know what I don't I don't think I've got a, that a massive gap in my wardrobe you know if I needed to go to the gym or needed to go to something I think I've got pretty you know some suitable things so um but what um but I've got that sporting fabric so I'm definitely going to make something uh but I don't know what yet and I can't remember how much I bought and I bought it from Frumble Fabrics well that leads now to this now I made uh, in the same fabric in the green a matching top but I don't wear it and I will admit I can't find it I've looked for it that's what, how I've ended up sorting all my gym wear out this morning and my skating wear because I was looking for the top I made to go with this and I couldn't find it so I don't know if it's in here because I wasn't all that happy with it now the top is amazing I'm gonna have to, someone's going in the hallway but they're gonna come in No, they've not come in. I could just hear someone coming out of the kitchen. I thought they're going to come in here. Now, yeah, the top is amazing, but and the construction and everything, it's gorgeous. But the um, it was just too low for me at the front. I just felt like I was all boob, and I just wasn't very comfortable in it. And I just know how I'd feel going to the gym. And I just, and I just felt like I really liked the round neck. But I just feel like I'd rather, I wouldn't mind if it was just a teeny bit of boob, a little bit. But it was just so much boob, right? And I just, and you know, you know, if you have to like bend over and things, I thought, no, I've told you this before in a video. So what I was going to try and do with that, because it was a double layered top right you do a burrito method and it was the fay from seam work and um and basically what i was thinking of doing is sewing some elastic all the way around the edge of the top pulling it so it cinched it in because this fabric's really stretchy so i think it would be quite forgiving then flip it over and then stitch it down again and then i could wear it but i can't find it so if i find that top that's what i'm going to do however there is another top that I want to tell you about and it looks very similar. Now, this picture doesn't do it justice, right, really. I'm sorry to the lady in the picture. Um, I think it's because she's slouching over. Maybe that's what it is. But I love the fabric she's used. She's put a little motif on it, Black Lives Matter. So her fabric choice and the design's great. And that's it. And it's, um, it's the... Oh, I've got something else caught up here. It's the two, uh, 25, it's a rad pattern. That's the design, a rad pattern. I've, I've never heard of rad patterns before. Um, never, so we've never sewn a rad pattern. And the, the pattern is called the 25K Bralette. Right. Now, I'm thinking of making this because I've seen Liz from the baker that sews she's made it i saw her on instagram she's made it and the neck looks a lot higher on it now i know it all depends on what size you're doing things because 
I think that really makes it. If you look on sewing patterns, depending on what size you be, if you look at the bigger sizes, they have a bigger neck hole. So bear that in mind, you know, that's why some people have said to me about my linden sweatshirt, have you made the neck smaller? But I haven't, but I've probably cut out the smallest size or the neck or the next one up i usually i often with patterns i end up cutting either the smallest or the next one up kind of area with patterns so people have said have you made this one and i haven't and i thought and i've looked at other people's lindens and i thought gosh yeah their necks look bigger have they changed it but i think it's the size that you choose so bear that in mind but um i think i cut a really small size out fade out anyway so the what i was thinking of doing with that pattern i was going to go back to the pattern and I was just going to redraw it and hire the neckline um, because that is really easy to do. I've done it on the Agnes top. Um, I've never actually made the Agnes top with the neck size it should be, but that is a plan. I'm I will make the Agnes this year with the correct neck hole, um, but I've made two in the past that have got my neck hole basically. So, so yeah, that's a plan this year. But this pattern, now I probably wouldn't have bothered buying it, right? It's not expensive, it's five dollars, I think. Um, but because I've got the Fay, I probably would have just altered that. But this pattern is free. If you join their Facebook group, Rad Pattern Facebook group, you can access this pattern for free. There's a code, so it wasn't all that easy. Um, Lee, Lee said in uh, her video, you've got to like rad patterns, which that's what I did. But it's not as simple as that. You've got to join the group. It's not just a case of liking their page. You've got to join the Facebook group. So obviously I liked their page thinking, oh, how am I going to get it? I looked around, couldn't find it, expecting them to message me. They didn't. Then I, um, then I joined the group and I found out then it wasn't that easy. I had to ask someone in the group. Nobody replied. I went digging around and I, and I basically found a little thing in the, the news kind of area. And then there, I could see there was a code. So you basically go to their shop and then put this code in. Um, and then I found it. So I downloaded it last night. Uh, attempted printing it. Um, and I accidentally printed two sides. Because I've asked for it to print two sided for the instructions. I didn't change it when I printed out the bralettes so the pattern pieces were on both sides so rather than just print out all the pattern pieces again I made sure it was only on single side and I just printed out then every other page because I knew I'd have one page on the other side so I printed out two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen twenty because there was 20 pages of patterns. So what I've done so far, um, I've laid some of them out on here and, um, and I'm gonna stick them together. I've not stuck them together yet. I'm just gonna, you can kind of do them in pieces. So I haven't laid them all out. I've just laid a few out. I'll stick those together, let them dry or whatever. If it's sellotape, obviously I, I won't have to let them dry. Um, and then uh, I will at some point, I don't know how soon it's going to be because I want to crack on with the South Bank. Um, but what I might do is I'm not gonna go straight. I don't know if I'm gonna wear it to the gym anyway. I might have it as a comfortable bra for the house. Do you know, like now I'm wearing, I've had to put this underwire bra on here because it's the only thing that was kind I could wear under this. And do you know what? I get a bit achy in them. So I'm going to maybe wear it as an underwear kind of thing. Maybe if I really like it, um, maybe then I'll make it into a gym top. And maybe I'll use that sporting fabric. And then if there's enough, maybe I'll make some little shorts and I've got a new outfit. I might look a bit bright. It's blue, really bright blue. But, you know, maybe if I'm feeling brave. So that is that. So I thought you might like to know about that. Um, thing with the hoods and pants. I'm still waiting for the fabric that I've ordered from my fabrics. It's not looking good because I found out, you know, they're in Germany. They're not in the UK, so I don't know how long they're going to be. Um, so I'll just have to wait and see. So the hoods and pants, it's going to wait a little bit longer. Uh, another pattern I found now. Oh, gosh. Um, 
This is a lady on Instagram. Her name's Lucy. I can't remember her Instagram handle, but um, I'll look it up when I'm editing this. I'll look it up and I'll put it on the screen. Now she had made this gorgeous, gorgeous apron, and uh, and it's basically it's a vintage pattern, and it's on the vintage pattern files, and it's absolutely free. And uh, I've downloaded it, so I printed out the booklet first. Well, I printed the instructions out first, and I chose to do it like a booklet. So we ended up only using one A4, and it's printed it out like that. So it's printed out smaller, and. Um, yeah, it was the, it says Hot Patterns, www.hotpatterns.com, but that's not the website I went to. I went to the Vintage Pattern file, and I've printed it out, um, and I haven't pieced these together yet. And it's basically a heart apron. Now, she, now Louise, um, Louise, Lucy, had made it um, in his gorgeous heart designed fabric and the pattern is hearts look and i thought it'd be so nice for valentine's day so i don't know if i will be making this for valentine's day if i'll get it done this year it depends if i've got some fabric that i like to make it and obviously it's getting awfully close and i'm not doing all that much shopping at the moment so so that's something um i'm gonna i might, I might stick all the pieces together and cut all the pattern pieces out even if I haven't got the fabric so yeah so that um it's a lot of dressmaking things um i've bought my luna rabbit down i made luna a long long time ago loom luna lamp in i think that's her name and um the reason i've bought her down is when i made her i didn't have a clapper right a wood wooden clapper i can't really get that now so i'm not going to get it but um i'll show it if you want to see in another video i'll show it you so what i'm going to do is when i made her coat um a wool coat i didn't give it i don't think i give it a good press so i'm going to give it a really good steam press and, uh, and put the clapper on it for her and um, you know give her a little bit of spot. I keep her in a bedroom she sits up on my dressing table uh, with um, a crochet flamingo that I made I crocheted a flamingo when I was in I think I was in Fort Ventura I did it on the plane and while I was in Fort Ventura sitting by the pool and uh, the yarn I, it's a toft pattern but I didn't use half yarn I used a pink acrylic um, Starcraft special double knit yarn but I was really disappointed when I was crocheting with it because there was all grey pieces in it I've never had that happen before with that yarn I'm not dissing that yarn I've got loads of it but it happened with that one so but then when I looked up flamingos because flamingos get their colour from um from the fish that they eat and actually they start off grey when they're young so I like to say that this flamingo because I carried on making it because I didn't have any choice because I was on holiday is a young flamingo becoming an adult and it's different isn't it so I should have brought the flamingo down actually because I'm talking about it so my flamingo and Luna sit together but Luna right I think she needs a little a little brother doesn't she so i plan this year I, th I think i plan this every year but i'd really like to make a boy version of luna this year and um, so she's got a little boy a little brother or boyfriend whatever you know kind of thing so yeah so that's what's going on at the moment i love making toys if you watched my video before i don't go very long before i make another toy so uh yes yeah, so that's might be another toy on the agenda it might not be the first one i make i might make something else i don't know so yes yeah, so that's where i'm at at the moment um i don't know if um the, i'm looking at this video and i've chatted for 34 minutes maybe uh, i might paste this video now or i might add a bit more to it i don't know yet so um so we'll either say bye or hold on i'm not sure so you'll soon know and see what happens next so bye <laughs> Right, excuse me with dressing gown. I decided to pop back on just to, you know, finalise this video because I kind of left it a bit up in the air so I didn't know if I was going to come back or not. And uh, I just thought I'll show you a couple of things and then I'll, I'll, I'll get this video ready for you. So I thought I'd bring in my little flamingo uh, to show you the one I was on about earlier. I don't know how much, you, how well you can see the grey flecks 
um, I mean, like some of the bits, I remember when I was um, actually crocheting him, some of the bits that were so grey, I actually undone them and uh, cut the grey bits out. But in the end, I just left it, it was just a bit of a, a grey kind of, you know, I don't know, I don't know if you can really see that on the uh, on the camera. But yeah, I, I love him. He's a toft pattern, and um, but not toft yarn. So I don't think you'd have got, got that with toft yarn. All you know, honestly. But toft yarn is a hundred percent alpaca, and it's a lot more expensive than a hundred percent acrylic. So there you go. So yeah, um, he sits or he or she sits um, on my dressing table with Luna. I've not. Um, use the clapper and uh, steam ironed her coat yet but I will be doing that I'll probably do it tomorrow now because it's evening now and I'm ready to chill out actually the reason I've knit down is my husband has sat down and uh, he's dropped off asleep so I thought you know what I'm just going to come down and just finish this little bit of video off he'll never you'll never know I've gone so uh yeah while um I've been gone I did have um a delivery and um like I haven't told you this it was an idea I've had I I've got homemade calendars, advent calendars for all my family I live with. Uh, there's enough for all of us to use now because I've made so many. And uh, basically, um, I normally buy my advent calendar. Um, so it's a bit of a surprise. And I'm not saying I'm not going to do maybe buy one in again. But I was considering doing my own calendar. So I've now purchased... I don't know how many things have I got? Um, three to four things to go in my own calendar now the one thing i'm unsure whether to keep it out for now or to put in my calendar um but what i'm going to do is i'm going to try and buy them all early in the year i've got a die um cutting machine so i and i've got a, a bag die so you cut out like paper style bags i'm going to pop little things in the bags put a sticker down on them and then hopefully if i buy them all early in the year i'll forget what they are so it will be like a surprise but I know I'm going to really like everything in it because I'll have chosen myself wouldn't I do you think that's a bit weird I don't know let honestly I'd really like your opinion see what you think about that actually um so uh, so I've ordered a couple of things and a pattern now when this pattern came and I've opened it today I thought oh my goodness right that doesn't really doesn't look like me and even the but it's the top version, so I'm going to show it you. Now, I don't I don't think this would do much for me, really. It's a bit smock-like, isn't it? But uh, it's Merchant and Mills, and it's the Florence. And I've not sewn a uh, Merchant and Mills um, pattern before. But the top version. Now, the top version, it does look very, like, wide and squished, doesn't it? But what the idea and i've seen it on people look on the on their website it's quite voluminous but i thought if it just finishes where my jeans finish or my shorts waistband it might still look like you've got some kind of figure underneath there like maybe in the, this is going to be more like a summery thing i think It'd be nice and airy maybe you've got shorts on and stuff you know i'm not, I'm not going to look like a bag of washing kind of look about me i might look like that if i put the dress on i think so i, I don't know maybe if you wore some fabric that was very very floaty and it was oversized maybe it would just kind of skim so you know but i think merchant and mills i've looked at their patterns they look like a lot of their things are a bit more for structured fabric a bit more that's got a bit more to it you know not so much floaty kind of thing you know floaty i imagine things like the wilder gown um you know um the indigo by tilling the buttons i don't have that pattern but they're you know really that floaty kind of things i suppose with those you could have something a bit more structured and it's going to look a bit more structured isn't it so that is that um I've received an order from um, Minerva and the th what's really funny is the thing I was ordering the other way I went on Minerva wasn't in there and I just ended up throwing some extra bits in there and I was a bit concerned and there was no invoice inside so I was a bit concerned. I had a look at my 
email, dispatch emails, they within they had the things listed included. I thought, oh no, they've forgotten it. But I phoned them and they got through straight away and they were really very good with me. She talked me through the email and it actually says that that fabric um it's not gonna it's a, it's not gonna come until the second of February or something. So the reason I went on there was to order a piece of fabric but that didn't come. But I did end up throwing a couple of extra bits in. And I, and I threw in some, so bear that in mind, they said they're paperless, that's why there's not an invoice. Now, I ordered a couple of swatches, and uh, and here's the swatches. Now, it doesn't tell you what they are. It gives you a code and who's packed it and the quantity. It's 10 centimetres, right? But it doesn't tell you what it is. But the th I remember I ordered, I think, a swatch of stretch denim. But it doesn't feel very stretchy to me. Is there any stretch? I can't feel any stretch in that denim, that white denim. And I ordered a Lady McElroy um, suiting fabric right never i've never had anything with lady mccallroy before so i don't know um, i don't know about her fabrics anyway this the, i'm guessing that's this but i would describe this as crepe it's like crepe to me it's got a bit of give not much a little bit of give a bit of give actually in the length there is a bit of give that way but yeah it's like a crepe and i'm not really a crepe type of person really i don't think so. i'm not i'm not very like i'm not i'm going to try and embrace the floaty dress like a lot of people like i've started watching a lot of people now on youtube and things i'm finding more and more people and a lot of people are into this swishy dress kind of thing now i'm very like when i first started doing a lot of dressmaking i was mainly making shorts you know shorts skirts very structured structured dresses i think that's my thing i think i'm a bit more structured but i am going to try a bit more flowing kind of things um i don't i don't know if it's me really I don't know if it's my bag, but I am going to experiment a little bit into the world of floaters. Well, in all honesty, I've got no choice because I was in So Hayley Jane's subscription group um, club for quite some time and I received a lot of floaty fabrics and I've got to do something with them. So I think I've got to embrace the floaty, haven't I? The floatiness somewhere or other. So there you go. So what else have I been doing? Oh no, I haven't finished with the delivery. Uh, I ordered some, I think it was denim thread and a white thread from Minerva. And they looks like very indigo looking, like purpley kind of colour, doesn't it? It doesn't look like any denim I've ever owned. So, but I've not got that colour in my stash. It's nice to have, isn't it? And I ordered some white and I ordered a pattern. Now, Angela from Devon Fred Tales, months and months ago, she used four fat quarters to make this pattern, right? And it's the Tilly and the Buttons, Jamie. And, um, and basically, there's a short version. Now, what Angela did, because it's four pieces, I don't know if there's a separate piece for the waistband because I haven't opened the pattern yet. But she used basically a different fat quarter for each kind of bit, you know. And I thought that was a really good way of using up your fat quarters because there might be some other fat quarters I received in the So Hayley Jane boxes that I don't really intend on quilting with or making anything else with. So, you know, we all need pyjama shorts, don't we, in the summer? So, that, And there might be something I could just wear around the house, you know. So, uh, yeah, so I'm going to be making, a few, I think, a fair few fat quarter pyjama shorts um soon so that's going to be nice and it will use up some of my stash um i've basically i've traced out not traced i've um i've pieced together the pieces for this the little um what was it called the sweet 
Nothing's Retro Apron. Um, I've stuck all those pieces together. They they didn't go together all that nicely, really. That's, this is the layout of it. A real long piece, and then the piece is here. Um, but it's the way I think it would have been better if I'd have sent it off as an A0 file and have it printed for me. But because I, you know, American sizes A4 are different to UK, I wanted to make sure I printed it out at 100%. Because often, um, if I print directly from my phone, American sizes, the test squares are too small. And then if you add all those inches up, it's going to be a lot, isn't it? A difference. And um, I know it wouldn't matter all that much with an apron. But what, what I tend to do now, if I do want to print American patterns at home, I'll do it from the computer and I make sure I'm printing at a hundred percent. But the it was a bit weird the the layout and things, but I've done it anyway, so I've got the long piece here. I'm not gonna get that out. But um yeah, so I've done that. Um so I'm gonna cut all those pieces out ready for when I've got the perfect fabric to make a little sweetheart apron. And uh, and I've also I've stuck all the pieces together for the bralette that I showed you earlier from rad patterns and there's basically uh when you've put them all together there's four top pieces on the fold and there's two small straight pieces one's a armband i think that's an optional armband i think you can either do a burrito method from what liz said or you can have an arm, or you can use an armband and have a single layer. So the one that I, I kept on calling it the the Fay, didn't I? It's the K, the pattern I used. That was a burrito, double layered burrito method. Uh, and I'm going. This this stand's going to move. So go like this. It's resting on it. And there's this bit. It's the waistband for it as well. So uh, I think there's all different sizes. Uh, from what Liz says, you can choose your bust. You've, there's a full bust. A, um, oh yeah, a full bust regular cup, a full bust smaller cup, and a full bust larger cup. I haven't really, really looked at this. I, I, I kind of know that you have to go decide if you're a full bust or a smaller bust. And you go by what your underbust. Yeah, you choose your underbust basically. But I haven't had a good look at that. I can't really explain it to you properly yet because I haven't had a really good look at it. And I don't even know if I've got the right fabric. So uh, that's where I'm going to leave it today. Um, I really hope that you've enjoyed what I've shown you today. It's been a bit of everything, it really, hasn't it? Started off with a bit of the hair clips, things I've bought, you know sticking pattern pieces together tracing paper and things a bit of crochet a bit of talking about clapper and ironing is a bit bit of a mishmash but that's kind of what i'm doing at the moment i'm just bringing you more regular videos just inviting you basically into my craft room and seeing what happens rather than me just going away making a load of things and coming back you know maybe that's the kind of style some people prefer but just during this lockdown i'm just inviting you more into my life into my craft room into what behind the scenes what goes into these things you know basically back down to pattern stage and tracing and things you know because that's actually quite a lot of work you know the sewing is the quick easy fun bit really you know, you've got all the, there's a lot of work that goes into it. Obviously, I'm creating myself a lot of work at the moment because I've not make, been making a pattern more than once. I've literally been making one, maybe making another version of it and then moving on to the next one. One, I'm just keep trying and trying and trying all these things. Eventually, I will start revisiting patterns and redoing them. But at the moment, I'm just quite excited. I just want to try another one and another one and another one, you know so uh, that's just the way it's going at the moment so thank you so much for joining me today and I'll be back soon and maybe I'll actually have something sewn up to show you maybe my safe bank maybe maybe a bralette if I've got maybe even the the shorts you never know do you so anyway I'll be back soon uh, with some more more things to show you thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you again soon bye